welcome back to another episode of the Women in Money Cafe. Now, if like many of us, I suspect that this Monday or this week is your last week and your last weekend before you get paid. And January is not a fun month at the best of times. So what we've done is we have trolled our own brains, our audience's brains, Instagram and the internet to try and come up with a list of things that we can do this weekend that don't actually cost any money. So it's kind of known as a no-spend weekend. Now, I'm going to caveat this because with it being the Women in Money Cafe, we're not terribly rigid. So some of the things might technically involve 50p or some notional amount of money, i.e. let's say we suggest going for a hike, and you're like, oh, but that's the car and it's got petrol. We're not going to be really rigid with it, okay? But it's ideas that you can either do for absolutely free or it's money you'd already kind of spent because you put petrol in the car so that's what we're all about today is come up with ideas what can we do this weekend that won't cost any money i'm joined today on the sofa by emily hi everyone all right thank you hey emily how are you doing today I was okay, actually, Julie, until we started talking about this podcast, and I'm getting really anxious about it. <laughs> right, so the idea of not spending any money is making me quite fearful, but I'm sure we'll get there. We'll get there. We will. I'm hoping that we can turn this into something that's a bit more fun. Like, see if you hear things that you're like, actually, I'm going to try that. One of the challenges I would put out to you is, right, okay, so we're maybe going to do it this weekend out of necessity because we don't have any money left. But if we kind of like it and it's kind of fun, maybe it could become a regular thing. Who knows? Maybe once a month you have a no spend weekend. And with the extra money that you don't spend, that could go in a little savings pot for something, couldn't it? Something treaty. I don't know. It's just hmm. an idea. I like that. That's good. Right. So, Emily, would it be fair to say then that the concept of not spending money is leaving you a bit twitchy and uncomfortable? I am really scared by this. <laughs> <laughs> really right. scared but by the end of this podcast Julie you'll have convinced me it's a really good idea if I say that the word spa will be involved Ooh. does that make you feel any better well is somebody going to take me to the spa as a gift or mm. am I going to just put the saved money towards the spa I suppose either of them could motivate me definitely. now well you see this is one of the ideas that I came across when I was researching the episode is Someone is getting together all of their beauty product that they haven't used up and they're going to create a little spa for themselves this weekend using all of the little samples and all of the little bits that they've still got and they're going to look after themselves. Mm. Yeah, it's not, you're not moved, are you? You still want the, you still want to be taken to a spa. Well, I just need somebody else to massage me because it's really hard to massage yourself. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> not that kind of podcast. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried, I'm talking shoulder massage. Have you ever tried to do that? I mean, it just doesn't work. On, I mean, I suppose I could, now. I could no. enslave one of my children maybe to do it for me. Yeah, I'll get your partner. In. Yeah, I'm not sure about my partner, but I think if I asked my children to do it, they'd say, how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> no, failed at the first hurdle. <laughs> I think the answer is I will make dinner for you today. Yeah, you get to live another day underneath this roof. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I quite like this idea because we all have those little little samples that we've got from places and the little bits of nice beauty stuff that we've got left over. And we can just get all of that out, line it all up and just like, okay, what am I going to use and how am I going to use it? So I quite like that one. Actually, you know, Julie, that does appeal to the sort of sustainable element of myself because, yeah, I like the idea of using up things that you've got in the cupboard rather than throwing them away so yeah ah, I feel good about that now yeah and the great thing is you see once we've used them all up and they are empty then we can throw them away which is kind of decluttering as well which I believe is meant to make you feel really good and it does you know we've just spent a weekend decluttering a bit so and I have actually reached Monday morning feeling a little bit sort of you know I can get to the desk without fighting my way through all the rubbish so yeah that has worked quite well Right, see, because I don't really do the whole decluttering thing. Or maybe I do and I just don't realise I do it. But it is meant to be really good for the mind. So oh, so the, the homemade spa day, one, mm-hmm. is going to feel good. Two, you're going to use up all those little bits you've got left. And three, it's decluttering. So, and as yeah. Emily says, sustainable. We love that. 
I do love that. Shall I crowbar in my other spa idea? I yeah. Don't get excited, Emily. I know this is not going to rock your boat. Okay. (laughs) And this is actually from on Instagram. There's Saving Money Bish, and she did a post about no spend weekends. Oh, a couple of weeks ago. I thought, oh, I'm go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just make a wee note of all her ideas. But one of them was to give your plants a spa treatment. Now I'm not green fingered. And judging by your face, Emily, you're not green fingered either. But if you're one of these people that went through lockdown and just bought loads and loads and loads of plants, apparently the plants like if you dust them, water them, preen them a bit, give them a bit of fertilizer. So maybe on the Saturday, have the spa for yourself and on the Sunday, the spa for your plants. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, I, I sense that this no spend weekend is really just about wasting the weekend, sort of filling it with things to do. And actually, you know, it doesn't rock my bay, but I'm sure it would appeal to a lot of green fingered listeners out there. So yeah, let, let, let's let suggest that for the green fingered ones. I'm, I might just go for a run with a dog or something. But yeah. Yeah, I think you and I are in the same boat there, except for the dog bet. Okay, no, it's funny that you mentioned dogs, because when I went into our Facebook group and I asked for suggestions, dogs were really popular as a thing to do. So Jennifer likes walking a dog. And then Kate, she as she suggested walking a dog. And she said, if you've got botanical gardens near you at this time of year, it's really nice to walk around there with your dog. So I know that you've got a dog. Tell me about your favourite dog walk. Well, Percy and I like to run to the embankment here in the town that I live in. And we run up the river and around a lake. And it's a lovely lake with lots of wildlife. And I just have to stop him from chasing all the swans and the geese and everything. But yeah, beautiful on a lovely day. Not so nice when it's raining, but absolutely uplifting and free. So that's that. That's a good thing. We like that. Yeah. Plus, like this is that being outside, which is always good for you, isn't it? Yeah. So what sort of walk do you like to do, then, Julie? You've obviously not got a dog to go with, but what do you like to do? No. Well, do you know what? It's funny because Tamsin's come in with the suggestion and some of my best walks have been with Tamsin. So Tamsin's suggesting hiking. Now, she did caveat it. She says, not technically free if you've got to drive to get there. But Tamsin's taken me to some of the most amazing places in the Peak District to go walking, which are really nice. But even where I am, we've got Strathclyde Country Park, and it is absolutely massive. I mean, it's huge. You could go to Strathclyde Country Park and go to a different bit, and it's going to feel like maybe four or five different parks that you've visited. So just check out wherever you are. I know the Debbie Hancock, who I'm hoping I can convince come on to the podcast at some point in the future, because Debbie's, you know what's really cool about Debbie? Right? What's cool about this, Debbie? It's going to sound like an oxymoron, this. Debbie is an accountant, Right. But she's interesting. <laughs> oh shit! I've just offended all the accountants. The lesson, haven't I? Yeah, <laughs> no, but she's lost she's... all of the accountants. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like a really fun accountant. So I'm hoping she's going to come on and join us at some point. But what she was saying, she lives quite near the New Forest. And what she'll do is she'll arrange to meet some of her friends there, and they'll take a flask of hot chocolate with them, and they'll have a good old walk, have something to warm them up as they go go along. I just thought, God, that sounds really nice. It's a good way to catch up with friends, isn't it? It is nice. And, you know, when you were talking about the parks earlier and I was thinking if I was to spend a long enough time in the park, what I would then want to do is go to the cafe or the kiosk that you always have in the park and Mm. I'd want a coffee. But there you've just solved that, haven't you, by saying take the flask. So, you know, the The flask flask idea is a good idea sort of for wherever you go, isn't it? Yeah. And then it's, you know, before you go, you could have a little rummage around in the fridge and the freezer and have a look at what's due up or needs using. So if you're one of those people that froze all the turkey after Christmas Day, go and dig it out and you can make sandwiches and take a little picnic with you. Yeah. Along with your flask. I'm just having throwbacks to when I was sort of eight or nine and my parents dragged me out for walks and we had horrible sandwiches. <laughs> and I don't know. I think I'm traumatized as a child because obviously this is something that happens in your childhood and you don't understand it. And then you get to our age where you've got your own children and you absolutely understand it. But yeah, maybe actually this is to, to instill in your children that idea of we don't have to consume all oh. the time. Oh, yeah. This is, this is a learning opportunity for our children. 
I think that's a really good point, actually. And that's it. If you do have children, get them involved in it as well. And maybe have a little competition for who can come up with the best free idea. The prize is not like £100 worth of Lego, by the way. Right. You'll have to come up with some kind of free prize. Now, all the ideas we've had so far with regards to the, the, the walking and the hiking, what have you, walking the dog, that only works if it's not raining. Mm -hmm. so we need some inside ideas in case the weather's not great so jennifer was talking about walking the dog but jennifer also came up with one of my other favorite ideas i love this one emily duvet morning watching films mm, like that yeah mm -hmm. so if you were to have a duvet morning watching films what would it be Oh, wow. You're just asking me here at the beginning of January and I've just spent a month watching Christmas films. <laughs> so probably not a Christmas film if it was January, but do you know, I really like some of the old classics, you know, things that just pop onto onto the TV sometimes on a, on a Saturday afternoon and you're not quite expecting it and you think, oh, oh yeah. yeah, like Breakfast at Tiffany's or, you know, these kind of things or Casablanca. <laughs> I, yeah no I like that as well yeah so I, I tell you what listeners if you want to send us in your duvet morning film recommendations then Emily and I will have a brilliant excuse to not get out of bed before 11 o'clock on Saturday morning for the next couple of months that would be really, really appreciated on our part we can just tell them <laughs> Emily we're doing research for the podcast we can't get out of bed yet absolutely yeah you have to get yourself to hockey darling <laughs> okay one of the other suggestions that came in was from helen and helen suggested youtube playlists now are you familiar with these emily no you'll have to explain this one to me i'm no, afraid i didn't know either so i had to go and figure it out so it's just like a it's like a playlist like you get on spotify it's just it's on youtube and so the suggestion is, is get it on the telly, get the playlist going and have a good old dance. Oh, I, thought, I like that. A bit of exercise, a bit of yeah. raise the endorphin levels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you could even, because obviously we're always competitive in our family, but you could even make it a competitive dance competition. Oh, now that I like. Because what is that game? Is it just dance? Yeah. On the, and and that's we'll, technically free, isn't it? I mean, using the electricity, yeah. but that's all right. We'll allow that, won't we? Yeah, uh -huh, because we said at the start we weren't going to be rigid. Yeah. We? So we're trying to come up with a variety of ideas. So you'll notice a lot of them are quite sort of family orientated because we all have kids. But if you don't have children, I think one of the other ideas I really liked was getting yourself a selection of TED Talks to watch. Mm. Because, you know, Love improve TED your mind and all that. So... What do you think about that one, Emily? Love TED Talks. And also, obviously, what's quite good on YouTube is it, it starts to recommend podcasts that it thinks you'll like, doesn't it? So that is a nice way to get going with them. You'll be sent lots of suggestions. Is there any particular Just, subjects on TED Talks that you would recommend or that you you enjoy? Oh, gosh, I just like all these self-improvement ones uh, or people who have come back from a massive adversity, you know, you know, having been ill or lost a loved one in a tragic way. <laughs> I just love to hear. Sorry, it's not funny at all, but I just love to hear the empowerment that some of these people are very good at mm. portraying in the way that they, they speak about what they've been through. I just, you know, it's like it's what it's how I choose my podcasts as well. I just love it when say Oprah interviews somebody who has been through the mill and has come out the other side and it just shows us exactly what human nature can achieve if we just put the right mindset on and I think that's what we need at this time of year isn't it just to sort of be yeah. aware of the fact that we get we I know it's hard we we do actually get to choose our mindset and if we don't like the one we've got we've got to change it Oh, and fantastic. I find TED, TED Talks and podcasts really help me do that. Right. So you like to be inspired by your TED Talk. Yeah. I yeah, like definitely. to be challenged. I like to have my thinking challenged. And I had to watch two recently for the coach training that I'm doing. And there's two videos we had to watch where it was women talking about being biased and being aware mm -hmm. of our own biases. And one of the women, I can't remember her name now, what was dead interesting is she works in HR. And she's very high up in the corporate world.
But she was talking about how bias has an impact on the workplace. Bear in mind what she does for a living. She spotted that she has a bias against women asking for a pay rise. So guy came and asked her for a pay rise. Yep, no problem. Women, women came and asked her for a pay rise. She's like, mm, not yet. And she spotted herself doing it and realized, oh, oh my God, I have a bias against this. And I really like the fact that it was that all openness and honesty and self-awareness there because we all have them. But it's only if we recognize them, acknowledge them that we can start to change them. So I like to be challenged by my TED Talks. <laughs> Just out of interest, I know we're segueing a bit, but did she say why she thought she had this bias? Did she figure that out? Because I'm interested to know why. I can't remember. If if you're interested, I'll send you the link to the, the TED Talk. And if That'd anybody else is interested, I'll stick it in the show notes as well. <laughs> I'm making a little note here, TED Talk link. Excellent. Okay, so I mentioned at Saving Money Bish on Instagram, I'm going to rattle through because she did a really good post with nice little graphics on it of ideas so one of them was have a virtual clear out and what she meant by that is unscribe to emails delete apps and stuff like that and thought oh I quite like that idea because who else's phone is full of crap or is it just mine oh yeah absolutely it's terrible and also as you'll know I've just sort of changed jobs so I'm in the process I've almost completed my complete clear out of one old email and unsubscribed to everything and then obviously gone over to the new one and resubscribed <laughs> which I'm probably going to regret at some point we'll have to unsubscribe to a lot of it but yeah it has made me feel very good and I have to say it was a very good use of my time I'd definitely be doing that before I start talking to plants and you know dusting them definitely what was the other one I quite like this is it's a bit like the beauty makeup one but with food so it's going into your cupboards and seeing what, what you've got that you never really use and then challenging yourself to make something tasty to eat from it that you wouldn't normally do. So it's about getting creative in the kitchen. Oh, so like what, red, what, random things, show. what random things do you have at the back of your food cupboard, Emily? Oh, Julie, I really wish you'd shared some of these questions with me before. Oh, my goodness. I had found some roll malt pairings in, in my fridge the other day. Made a little canapes with them, a bit of Philadelphia on a cracker and oh, topped off good. with the roll malt pairing. My All husband right. just said, a bit Scandinavian, he said. Anyway, I'm not sure if that was appreciating them or not. But yeah, I've got some Demerara sugar that has been at the back of my cupboard for God knows how long. And in truth, it probably should get thrown out, but I'm wondering, what can I do with that? Yeah, sugar lasts forever. You definitely could use that. Brownies, cookies. Well, what I thought is, like, if I get that and some chicken drumsticks and then some soya sauce and, oh, yeah. or some teriyaki, because I know I've got teriyaki in the back of the cupboard as well, and just marinate the chicken in that and put the demerara sugar over the top of it and then bake mm. it, will it come out all crispy? It will. I don't know if it might come out a bit too sweet for me anyway, but, you know. All right. <laughs> sausages. Yeah, actually, you can. You need know, to get honey glazed sausages. I suppose sort of demerara sugar could do a similar kind of glazing effect. I've got honey sausage. in there as well, so I can chuck the honey in on top of the... Oh, well, I'll let yeah. everybody know how it goes, how much I can drumsticks turn out. <laughs> yeah, good luck with but no, I like the idea of baking, definitely. And again, it's another money-saving tip, though, possibly, depending on, as, as long as you haven't gone out to buy the ingredients. If you've got the ingredients there, or if you can improvise with the ingredients you've got, you can make snacks for either your children or yourself that you can have during the week. So, you know, when you just, I live very close to a shop. So if I get a little bit of a, like, oh, I just want something sweet or want something, run off to the shop get something but if you've got some nice homemade treats there already there you go it's going to save you money during the week as well that's a great idea i do i like that then one of the other suggestions that we had come in and i like this one because i've not done it for a while and i used to do it quite often with owen is i don't know if you'll need to check if they're open on saturdays okay is your local library Mm, so if it's a lot of them still open on a saturday morning and especially if you've got young children, that'd be quite a fun thing to go and do because they'll enjoy seeing all the books. 
And when you see their wonderment at all the books, it reminds you of how you felt when you went to a library when you were little. Yeah, I used to love going to the library, just browsing. And it's, I guess, browsing the library when we were young, similar to just going on Google now for children of our, you know, children yes. today, isn't it? Yeah. What you can learn in, in an hour, just browsing around a library, flicking through very random books. Yeah. It does expand the mind, though, I like that. Yeah, but, but, but at the same time, we see Googling as like a negative thing. Isn't oh, it the equivalent no. of spending hours down the library then? Oh, I'm expanding my mind every time yeah. I put in, you know, why doesn't Kate like Megan? <laughs> Or I such. think we should move on. Now. I'm, I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be so banal with my my Google searches. I'm quite intelligent with my Google searches. <laughs> okay, I'm going to believe you. Mine's just totally <laughs> random. You don't want to see what I search. One of the other ideas, and actually, Owen and I did this in between Christmas and New Year, is loads of museums are free, and they they're a lot better than I remember museums. <laughs> so we went to the Museum of Scotland. And this place is massive. It is huge. It's over multiple floors. It's got loads of really cool things in it as well. So we really enjoyed that. It's over in Edinburgh. So it's yeah, not it's not, it well. not close to me. But I know there's plen- plenty in, in Glasgow that I can go to. Are there any good museums near you, Emily? There's a little one in town. It's also an art gallery. It is actually fairly interesting. Not on the scale of the Museum of Scotland. Is that the one on Ch- Chamber Street in Edinburgh? It is, yeah. Yeah, because I used to, my law school was right next door. So I used to walk past that building all of the time. But you know how big it is then, isn't it huge? Yeah, it's quite impressive. Yeah. So anyway, there are actually a lot of museums and art galleries and things like that that we can access, isn't there? If we actually do the Google search to find out. Yeah. And I can't remember what it's called. Is it maybe called the Museum of Liverpool? The one in Liverpool, and it's just right down by the Mersey. I spent many an hour in there with Owen when he was little. That place is fantastic. And again, it's free. I'd take your flask of hot chocolate and your herrings on a cracker with a little bit of Philadelphia, <laughs> like Emily suggested. And that's you sorted for the day. Yeah, I think where, where these no-spend weekends come a cropper, especially if you've got children, is that if you do leave the house, at some point someone's going to get hungry or thirsty. That's the biggest issue I find with a no spend weekend. All right, so, so it's planning going, ahead. It's going armed. Yeah. Yeah. Planning ahead. I think one of my favorite ideas I've read is this one about writing a letter to a friend who lives far away. I like, remember when you used to write letters? I mean, emails are okay. But imagine if you actually went and sat and wrote a letter and then put it in an envelope with one of those old-fashioned stamp things and put it in the red box thing. And then sometime later, it will arrive with your friend completely unexpectedly. How nice is that? I do like you. It would be lovely, but I do like your optimism that it's actually going to get there. (laughs) We'll have no anti-Royal Mail chat on this podcast. Thanks very much. (laughs) Brian will hunt me down. it, It will get there. Yes, I did use the words eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Any it's other ideas idea. that are popping into your head? Life admin. Life admin, very, very important, isn't it? As we're always talking about on this show, dig out your will, have a read, <laughs> check that it's still valid and up to date, and maybe take out your insurance policies. Just have a little read. Yeah. <laughs> See if you can get yourself excited by the small print. I don't know. Do you know, do a spreadsheet on your expected income and expenditure and that sounds dull but afterwards I think you feel a lot better especially if you're one of these people who sticks your head in the sand a bit I think that's a really good show I like when I t- ask clients to do this I always say like see the thought of it you're going to hate me but what to do is get a bottle of wine <laughs> sit down and do it and afterwards you will feel so empowered for having done it So don't go and buy the bottle of wine. It has to be a bottle of wine that you've already got in the house. Even if it's not one you're that fussed on, bottle of wine, do your budget. Unless you're on dry January like me. Okay, poor Emily. We better move on from the alcohol. Better mention the alcohol. We're not talking about the alcohol. The last idea I've got is this has come from someone on Instagram and they're obviously a lot more creative than I am, but they do embroidery. 
And so they're going to spend the weekend doing some embroidery and that's going to double up as personalized gifts for friends throughout the year. I thought that's really cool because I, ca I can't do stuff like that. But I thought, how nice is it when you get a personalized gift? We all like that, don't we? So if you've got any crafty talents, can you put them to use this weekend and maybe even double up as gifts for people throughout the year? Yeah, that's a really good idea. And I'm very envious of anyone who can be happy sitting there crafting because it's just not for me, I'm afraid. But I do like the output, you know, something, you know, things like say somebody has a wedding anniversary, like a golden wedding anniversary mm. or something like that. And somebody does some beautiful embroidery they used to be called samplers didn't they where they used to have all mm. of the different ways to do letters and numbers my, my grandmother used to do that and when you've got something like that that commemorates a nice event mm. that's quite nice it's a good present so anyone who's doing able to do a bit of embroidery yeah maybe think about who's got a big birthday coming up or, a, or an anniversary mm. or something yeah this is where we wish we had michelle with us for this episode because she's amazing at stuff like that she she's is, really, she? really talented. So yeah. I missed right. out on that gene, I think. We have talents that lie in other areas, Emily, you and me. We have other yes. skills. Still so, looking for some of mine, but <laughs> how are your anxiety levels now at the thought of trying to get through a weekend without spending any money? I think I could do it. Mm. Maybe. Could I just on a Sunday night, could I just nip to the local pub and buy a glass of wine just to reward myself for the no spend weekend? Unless you want to learn to embroider and you could take him down a gift and swap it for a drink. Trust me, my embroidery is not going to be that good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can go. You can go and trade some of your cash for a glass of wine at the end of the weekend. Okay. Yeah. All right. But we hope that you found this useful. If you do try any of these things or you've got extra ideas, then do drop us a message. And let us know how you get on. So you can reach us at the women and money cafe at gmail.com. And until then, till the next time, uh, take care.